Hello. In this video, I want to explain another key result that is important when it comes to understanding how random variables should be interpreted. The result I want to explain is called the central limit theorem, and by the end of this video, I would like you to be able to state this theorem and explain why it's useful. The idea here is similar to the ideas we had for the law of large numbers. We are calculating a sum of independent and identically distributed random variables. Each of these random variables is an x value, and the sum of them is called Sn, as shown here. Now, obviously, if we take this summation and divide it by the number of experiments we have performed, n, we get a number that is itself random. We learnt, when we looked at the law of large numbers, however, that if we generate an infinite number of random variables, that, the number, that Sn over n is no longer random. In that case, Sn over n is equal to the expectation of the random variable with certainty. The law of large numbers told us that the modulus of the difference between Sn over n and the expectation, the, the probability of that modulus is greater than epsilon, was equal to zero. And thus, we could say with certainty that Sn over n is equal to the expectation in the limit as n tended to infinity. This is all very nice, but rather useless in practice. After all, we cannot do an infinite number of experiments. Hence, for all practical examples, Sn over n will still be a random variable. Now, given this, and given all we now know about random variables, we might reasonably ask, what is the cumulative probability distribution function for the random variable Sn over n? As it turns out, because of a result known as the central limit theorem, this cumulative probability distribution function is that of a normal Gaussian random variable. Putting some flesh on this statement, the central limit theorem states the following. In the limit of an infinite number of experiments, the probability that z is greater than Sn over n minus the expectation, all divided by the square root of the variance over the number of experiments, is equal to the value of the cumulative probability distribution function at z for a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance 1. In this expression, we use the letter capital Psi to represent the cumulative probability distribution function for this normal distribution with mean 0 and variance 1. Notice that technically this expression is only valued in the limit of an infinite number of experiments. Hence, when you are asked to state the central limit theorem, it is important to include the limit sign. In all practical examples, however, we will assume that this result holds even when we have not performed an infinite number of experiments. That is to say, we will assume that it holds when for certain n that are less than infinity. To demonstrate how the central limit theorem is used in practice, we are going to calculate a confidence limit. The assumption here is that we have done a set of n experiments. Each of these experiments has generated an identically distributed and independent random variables, and we've added all these quantities together and divided by the number of experiments to obtain Sn over m. We are now assuming that by doing so, we have estimated the expectation, mu, for the random variable that underpins our experiments. The confidence limit, Pc, is thus the probability that if we now do a second completely independent set of n experiments, we obtain an Sn over n value that is within a small number, epsilon, of the estimate that we obtain from our first set of experiments. In the expression we've shown here, we write this as a probability that our estimate of the expectation, Sn over n, is within epsilon of the true expectation, which we could have calculated if we had access to the probability mass or density function for the random variable. If you are confused about this statement, look again at the video on calculating the expectation of a random variable. We now take two simple steps in calculating this probability. In the first, we divide the two terms on either side of the inequality sign inside this probability by a factor of sigma over the square root of the number of experiments, n, for reasons that will become clear in a moment. To be clear here, sigma is the square root of the variance. In the second step, we then recognise that we can rewrite this first experiment involving a single inequality and a modulus sign using the two inequalities shown here. 
If we now remove the leftmost inequality, we have the probability that appears on the left-hand side of the central limit theorem, as shown here. Obviously, then, we can replace this whole probability with the term on the right-hand side of the central limit theorem, as shown. So we now just need to find the value of the cumulative probability distribution function for a normal random variable at epsilon over sigma over square root of n. To be clear on what this probability is, let's draw a Venn diagram so as to understand what it represents. The blue square here denotes the full set of values that are random variable Sn over n minus mu divided by sigma over the square root of n can take. We are calculating the probability of generating an Sn over n minus mu over square root of n value that is less than or equal to 1 to epsilon over sigma over the square root of them, n. We indicate this prob the set of outcomes to which this probability corresponds using the green square shown here in our Venn diagram. If we now return to the probability that we are trying to calculate originally, or the one between these two limits, we realise that in the probability we have calculated thus far, we have included outcomes for which Sn over n minus mu divided by, the square, by sigma over the square root of n is less than or equal to minus epsilon over sigma divided by the square root of n. We represent these outcomes on our Venn diagram using this purple square shown here. Now we can estimate the probability that Sn over n minus mu divided by sigma over the square root of n is less than or equal to minus epsilon over sigma over square root of n using the central limit theorem once again. It is equal, this probability is equal to the second term in the bottom equation here. Notice that in the second term here, we've put a subtraction sign in front of this term. This is because we are subtracting the purple area from the blue area to get the probability that we actually want, the probability that Sn over n minus mu is between minus epsilon and plus epsilon. The final result we have arrived at is shown here. Our confidence limit, P of C, is equal to this difference in the value of a, the cumulative probability distribution function for a normal this random variable, it's the difference between the value of this function at epsilon over sigma divided by square root of n and the difference, the value of this function at minus epsilon over sigma over square root of n. The cumulative dis probability distribution function for a normal Gaussian function is shown here. It is an even function and as such the second term in this expression is simply 1 minus the first term. We can thus simplify our confidence limit to the expression shown here. This notion of a confidence limit is critical when taking averages from multiple experiments. If you discuss experiments with physicists, chemists or biologists, biologists you will hear them talk about random errors and error bars. The formula we have just, we've just, arri we've just, arrived, just arrived at is, in essence, it connects a probability, a range, and a number of experiments, and thus tells you how confident you should be in your result. To understand what this statement means, it is best to draw a diagram. The line here represents all the possible outcomes we could get from our set of experiments. As we have discussed in previous videos, the actual result we can get is random and can thus be anywhere on this line. We know, however, or more accurately assume, that our experiments are each generating independent and identically distributed random variables. Hence, if we were to perform an infinite number of experiments, the law of large numbers tells us that the sum of the random variables divided by the number of experiments would be equal to the expectation mu, a quantity that characterizes our cumulative probability distribution function that underpins the experiment and random variable. This quantity is shown on the line here. What we actually do is perform a finite number of experiments. When the random variables generated by these experiments are added together and divided by the number of experiments, this generates an estimate for the expectation that is not equal to mu, but that is hopefully close to mu. We can calculate that the probability that it, the probability that it is within a distance epsilon of the true expectation value using the formula 
that we have just arrived at here. In other words, PC is the probability that the estimate of the mean that we obtained by arrived at by doing n experiments is within the box shown highlighted here in blue in the diagram. To finish then, let me remind you that the aim of this video was you to get you to a place where you could state, write down the central limit theorem and explain its usefulness. I've stated this theorem again here. I will finish by saying that the ideas introduced in this video are difficult and you will need to think carefully about them and solve some problems in order to understand them a little better. Another thing that you might do if you're totally confused is to watch this video again and see if you get it on the second time round. Thank you for your attention.